Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. It seems like everything is chaotic and scary in the business world these days. So I thought we needed some good vibes and inspirational messages. So we looked back over past shows and decided to replay the Christine Cumby episode from last year. She's one of my favorite people. She's my friend. She's a local change maker, a cancer warrior and survivor, entrepreneur. Katie and I think that Christine is always the model of grace in any situation. She's living proof that optimism, intentional living, and gratitude can be a secret weapon in all aspects of your life. Remember, there is more power in not having the last word. And we can all use some more of these kind of things in our lives right now. Katie and I love Christine, and we are not kidding when we say we want to be like Christine Cumby. Be the Christine. Enjoy the show and stay well. I'm Karen. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur with big ideas, and I'm the mom. I'm Katie. I'm a payroll specialist, business owner, and detail-oriented person that makes things happen. And I'm the daughter. Welcome to Cheers to Business. Christine Cumby, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Thank you for having me. Christine, you know, I know you very well. I feel like I do. You are my friend. But tell the listeners who you are and what you do. My name is Christine Cumby. I work at Gardberg and Kimberly. I've been there about 32 years helping people with their social security disability and veterans disability. I've seen you handle the most difficult business situations with a smile on your face. And I have a confession. (laughs) I'm I'm going to tell her, Katie, look at that look (laughs) on my face. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yes. It's a compliment. Okay. Go ahead. This is all. Her. Wait, you know what it is? I think so. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> we'll do something and we'll do it because we know we're right and we'll put a smile on our face and we'll call each other. When, I did a Christine today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well, com- it's just you. you are, it is awesome with the grace uh, that you carry yourself with. It is absolutely amazing and it doesn't matter if it's bad news or anything exactly. just your delivery and your presence when you're in a room I mean it's, it's almost intimidating to me because I'm just like gosh she's so perfect <laughs> <laughs> you have the strongest <laughs> subtleness that I've ever seen with a smile on your face you will go you are a <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> you are so sweet and what a compliment you keep Don't saying you that keep saying that that is absolutely a compliment that attitude to flows through you. I mean, you can feel it in a room. Absolutely. You oh. fill a room up. And so if we get to college and went, I did a Christine today. <laughs> we go, way to go. <laughs> I think about it like before going into a networking event. Like yes. you, you stand up a little straighter, you smile, and it's just like, all right, be Christine, come be. Let's do this. <laughs> and deliver the message. Deliver the message. I mean, it's not always the best message, right? You don't always get to give good news, but you give it with a great attitude. You know, you just own it. This is what we've got to do. These are the decisions we've got to make. And I just need you to listen and be on board with me. And we're going to get it done. For any person, attitude is key. I think that gets taken for granted. All the time. So what about attitude? Well, I just think that in your relationships with your staff, or your vendors, or your neighbor, no matter where you are in life, that a positive relationship or positive attitude can make a difference in every single aspect of your life or their lives. We want to be you when we grow up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're twins already. Yeah, yeah, aren't we, though? (laughs) I would love to have, because I don't know if we've ever discussed this, your history, as far as your career history and how you got to where you are now. I'm from Mobile. Love Mobile. Love traveling, but always love coming home. I have worked, it seems hard to say, I've started saying a couple of decades, but I've really worked <laughs> for Gardberg and Kimberly for over three decades. But I sounds, <laughs> sounds really amazing. old to say that. <laughs> I know this year's 32 years. That's crazy to me. Your job's <laughs> older than Katie. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Hey, that's okay. She said it, not me. Do you, it's okay because, you know, I love what I do. I love it. I you, just you always enjoy have. every day. Like, it's a challenge. I mean, whether it's a technical challenge or a personnel issue or a law change or whatever it's going to be. Kicking somebody out of a company. Kicking somebody. <laughs> I mean, I really do enjoy it. I mean, I really enjoy it. Now, on the side, I have multiple other entrepreneurial interest. And uh, I'm a capital and I mean, investor, angel investor. Yes. And so I enjoy staying busy. I enjoy being interested in other things in the community. And I look for ways 
to make a difference. I mean, I consider myself a change maker. Well, my friend, I'm going to talk about something that I have your permission to talk about. Sure. And you had breast cancer. Yes. You shaved your head, proud of it. <laughs> talk about attitude. You know, and that caught me off guard. Um, I'm really excited because next month, which is soon, uh, we are going to announce that uh, I'm part of the Portrait of Hope for American Cancer Society. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And Gina Gregory and I are going to do that. And so we're going to have um, a kickoff party in August. And then we're going to have the walk in October. That's so I'm fantastic. Ex- well, I want in. And I don't know how many people have known this, but I had invasive vulva cancer two years ago and had surgery very fast. It all happened really fast. And people would go, vulva, ooh. And I went... I've come to realize that it's just a body part. So I'm going to have minor surgery again on Wednesday, but it's, it's very minor. And so I had to go get my lab work today, and I thought of you, and I just need to be Christine. I need to have good attitude. So you helped me today because it was it's nothing major that I'm good. But just walking into the Cancer Institute, people do not realize when they're texting and mailing it, calling and why didn't you return my call? Dude, I'm sorry. I kind of got a little life situation going on right here, but you can't do that. You have to have the attitude of, yes, I'll be right with you. I'm happy to help you. And it's hard. It is. And I'm really proud that you were able just to say that today. What I've found since last year when I was diagnosed is most people are really private about their cancer situation. For me, uh, especially mine, I got I got extremely sick fast. You know, I went in for a mammogram. I didn't expect any problems. I didn't have a family history of breast cancer. I'm just doing my normal annual routine mammogram. I had a meeting afterwards. I was like, okay, I hope they see me on time. I've got to I've got to get to this appointment, right? <laughs> yeah, and everything else, right? So I'm just going to run in here and run out. I, I told somebody it was just like, you know, you would have a manicure scheduled or, you know, take your dog to the vet. Put him in the visor and leave. That's right. And so I was just going to do that and walk out. And the nurse knew immediately that there was a problem. And so I I, I was in disbelief. And so I kept Shock. saying, I've really got an appointment. Can, you know, can I come back? And she says, you cannot come back. Oh, my gosh. And I was thankful for that because it, it just rained me and like I needed to sit there and finish what I was doing. And I was in denial. But talking about that, because... How many times have people rescheduled their mammogram or not scheduled or not go at all? How about the, the GYN? Right. If I can get one person for their mother, their sister, whatever, girlfriend, even your ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, get to get checked. Because I really do want to get a T-shirt. Because, everybody, you know, breasts were taboo back how long ago? Not that long ago. Well, you couldn't say breast or boobs or tits or whatever. And, you know, they hear the V. Oh, my God. Well, I've been married 31 years. That's an intense conversation. So I really do. I've asked Johnny to make me a T-shirt that says, God love the tatas, but don't forget about the hoo-hahs. Yes, I would wear that. <laughs> would you wear yes. it? Yes. Oh. See, Johnny? <laughs> Johnny, you make that. I'll wear that for the walk. <laughs> <laughs> because it is rare. My husband researched it. I've never researched it. And I'm going to be fine. But the, somebody go get checked. There's just too much we don't know. You don't see until it's, and I don't want it to be too late for anybody. And there's so much to learn. And that's why I'm having the conversation about it is because for me, it was a, you know, a lot of different things. But one thing I wasn't aware of is low vitamin D. Like you think we live in the South. I'm getting sunshine. I'm at the beach every weekend. Mm-hmm. Well, that just wasn't true because I wear, you know, 70 sunscreen <laughs> head to toe every hour and a half. And so little things like that are not so little. And it's so easy. You can go to any drugstore and get vitamin D3, you know, talk with your doctor and get your levels checked twice a year. But that's so easy to do. Can I tell you funny? Yeah. So one time my normal doctor sent me to a specialist, whatever, infectious, and he said, you have Graves' disease. And I went, oh, my God, what is that? And, you know, so Dr. Internet scared the shit out of me. And so I stopped by. My ex-sister-in-law was a bartender. So I stopped by to have a beer with her, and I said, they've told me I've got Graves' disease. She said, oh, shut up. And she said, you just need some vitamin D. Sure enough, <laughs> listen to you, bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't really, don't really do that. <laughs> well, no, but listen to me, too. So the bartender and me, right? <laughs> You're getting it from two great sources right here. But things like that, I, I think that women and Men, everybody just talking about taking care of yourself, taking that moment to go get those things done. Because, um, you know, I had a very rare, aggressive type of cancer. And had I missed that appointment, you know, it would have been a completely different last 16 months of my life. 
you know, and I had the pleasure of knowing your husband as well. So when you were away getting your radiation, to talk to that man with he has tears in his eyes with his proudness of you and your strength and your attitude with tears in his eyes, that moved me so much. And then to turn on social media and chick's got a smile on her face with the selfie. Check me here. <laughs> check me there. And just the attitude because, no, business doesn't stop. But you have to put it on hold at some points to take care of yourself. So have the attitude. Get the checkups. Do what you need to do. Um, somebody asked me recently, do you do self-care? I went, not until recently. And I was forced into it. Don't be me. Well, and I feel like there's a difference between going for your annual checkups and self-care. I almost feel like the annual checkups, that should be a requirement. Like I self- had not gone in eight years. I, you get busy Hello. and you think, it, you know, it can't happen to me, which I can't even imagine being in the position you guys have been in. And Mine's nothing like hers. So I think just an important thing for everybody, we all get busy in our career careers, family, whatnot, it's so important to put that pause button and go for that, your annual checkups, and you know, all of them. You know, we kind of got off on ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that literally, but we have, Johnny Gosh. just put his head down. I didn't mean to say that either. We haven't even started drinking the wine yet. <laughs> I know, I know. We got to throw it out the brook at Donkey Market really soon. Brooke, thank you for the wine today, but I'm really not sure if Karen's going to be allowed to drink any. <laughs> I think I need a bottle. So tell me the three best ways having a great attitude can help you in your business. Or even how to have a better attitude. Karen has this down pat. I mean, at least for the last few years, I've noticed a change in this. Do not take yourself so seriously. No, I don't. Right? You got (laughs) to laugh at it. You you, (laughs) Write that, that that beautiful laugh where she can just let go and say what's on her mind. You you have to not hold it in. Don't ask me what I think. For years, you know, know, I thought about, oh, this is so serious. This is business. And I I want to do it this way. And I want to do it the right way. And I want these people to understand. You know, what I want to understand is I'm heart and soul. I'm passionate about what I do, and, you know, I'm going to give you my best when I'm doing it. And so the way I do that is by not taking myself so seriously and, you know, by really just focusing, like, every day, intentional living. Like, I get up, and I think about what are my intentions for this day, you know, to remain calm. And if I have to get on someone's ass to make sure that— With a smile on your face. You know, I'm not frowning or showing (laughs) these teeth, but that, you know, that I'm understanding they're a person, too, and that— how would I want someone to talk to me? I want that same respect, right? And so I really focus on that a lot. You do it well. Well, thank you. You do it very well. I recently heard something from Braxton Gilbert, who he owns a gym here in Mobile, and he's a fitness influencer. And he said he was in this situation, and God, he died. And he said, all right, your life is over. He's like, well, I don't want that. And God told him, all right, you can go back and live your life over, but you have to do every single thing the same. Every decision you made, every, you know, everything that you did, it has to be the exact same. And he's like, well, I don't want to do that either. So it's living with that mentality. If I had to do this all over, I need to be happy with those choices. And that was just a really, you know, you, you hear all the time, live like today is your last day, but Thinking about having to do this moment over again, it really makes you kind of second think about everything. That is so deep. He said it way better, but that's the gist (laughs) of it. I met him at BizCom. He's He's a a great guy, so follow Braxton Gilbert. (laughs) Yes, follow him. I went to high school with his mother. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about the big age difference here. But uh, same thing, just like he is an influencer in your life, be around positive people, people who influence you, people who have the same values. If someone does not have the same value or the same work ethic, you need to change that. You need to weed that out and really focus on what's important and how to surround yourself with smart, forward-thinking people. Especially with social media. You know, if you're scrolling through your feed, whether it be Instagram or Facebook, and you're noticing, you know, you're not feeling as positive as when you first got on your phone, pay attention to who you're following. You know, if you see something that kind of makes you cringe or unhappy or it's negative, unfollow that person or that page and it's fill your life with positivity. I agree with that completely. And the other thing I think I would say is be thankful and give thanks. Tell people how much you appreciate, you know, the ability to work with them or their their opinion, even if it's different than yours. Like my favorite thing to do is watch two different news reports, right? I want to know both perspectives. That interests me so much. I watch CNN and Fox. I do. Right? And I, 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 I'm really intrigued by that. 
But if someone comes to you and they, they're thinking outside the box, it's not a box you're willing to go in. But I always appreciate and thank them for that idea. It doesn't mean that their box is wrong right. just because it's different. I appreciate you, Katie. I appreciate you, too. So you I hesitated. No, it's like... <laughs> she did hesitate. Emotional stuff, like... Uh, feelings. Ugh. We have a picture of one time I said, hug me, and she climbed up underneath the table, and I'm pulling her out by her feet. I just want you to love me. I'm just me. not like a touchy, feely. I, I blame my That's analytical brain. Like, I'm just, I'm a very bullet point person. And like, that was one thing when we started growing Payroll Vault was, you know, going for payroll consultations or those initial meetings. Like, I would just walk in and get straight to it. All right, how many employees? You know, what pay frequency? And I had to learn, like, oh, no, like, we need to, like, build a rapport and talk about, like, our kids and family and get to actually know each other. And that was one thing that didn't come naturally to me. I mean, now I love it now that I've kind of opened that door. But it took some practice. Probably because I talked the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm a big idea person, right? So I can have the idea. Like I want to, like a while ago, something broke on this table. And I thought before he walked out there, I was thinking, oh, I know exactly how to fix that. Now, I'm not the person to go to the store and buy the four pieces of things that needs to do it. But I had the idea, right? So it takes everybody, you know, it's a cumulative effort. And so I might have the big idea, but I sure appreciate the detail people like you because I know I need payroll and I know I need it to work right. And I'm so happy to have you do my payroll. (laughs) Thank you. But, you know, I don't enjoy that part of it. But you just have to appreciate the people who surround you who bring that to the table. Absolutely. You know, Christine, when, when life hits us, it's always at the most worst time it could ever be. Literally in tax season's One tax season, I had a miscarriage. I lost my mother in a tax season. I lost my grandmother in a tax season. Our house got destroyed in a tax season. And I've always said that it's because God wanted to hit me in the head so I'd realize that there's more to life and nobody gives a about tax returns but me at that particular moment. And I have always said that. But how hard was it for you to get that news and then come back to the office because business doesn't stop and have that attitude because you were on the appearance, fantastic at it. Someone told me this and it it just weighed heavy. I mean, it was the best piece of advice, but once you give it to God, you can't take it back. I just gave it to God and I thought, I'm not going to worry about this. I've got things to do. I've got the best team here at my office. I've got the best group of friends, neighbors, and family, and I trust my doctors and I'm giving it to God. And I never look back. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Can't change it. You know, I was out in Houston crying my eyes out just because I missed everybody and, you know, I was sick. But um, I'll tell you, I I didn't worry whether I was going to be okay or if I was doing the right treatments or, you know, I didn't worry about my hair coming back or toenails. It looks great, by the way. My feet were going to, you know, I was going to be able to walk right again. I didn't worry about those things because I'm just taking it one day at a time. And that's just the honest truth. Cheers to beating cancer. Cheers to curing cancer. (laughs) That's right. Well, my friend, we're coming to the end of the show, and it has been such a pleasure having you on today. So I'm a veteran who can use your help. How they get in touch with you? We would love to help them. They can call us at 251-343-1111, or they can reach us at our website, guardberglaw.com. Cheers to being a Christine. (laughs) Cheers. That should be a shirt, too, Johnny. (laughs) Y'all, thank you so much for listening and being here with us today. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheerstobusiness.com.